Patience and perseverance have a magical effect before which difficulties disappear and obstacles vanish. John Quincy Adams, President of the United States, son of John Adams. And I tell you, John is right, or I believe they called him Quincy or JQA. Regardless, he is correct through and through. Patience and perseverance. We talk about it day after day. The magic of staying with this 10 to 15 minutes, practice trading, doing all that you need to do to master this day after day, no matter how long it takes, and enjoy the practice trades. Enjoy getting good at this. That is what it is all about, is learning these charts. And it does take some time. You have to get a little bit of mileage, as I write about in the book, uh, when I was learning how to ski and getting trying to get very good at it. And my instructor said, you got to be patient and you got to put in the miles, which I've done. I can ski pretty much anything anywhere now. Uh, after 20 years, I guess I ought to be able to do that. Maybe more like 30. But Let's jump into these charts because the weekly vertical crossover, I think, has come through for us again. I was getting worried, my friends, looking at the way the charts were topping out, but a lot of warning signs and concerns that I had. Look what happened. We had a down day on the S&P 500, and what looked like it was going to be a crossover all week pulled back through. So we have no crossover on the S&P 500. We also have no crossover on the NASDAQ 100. We also have no crossover on TLT. And we have no crossover on gold. What does that mean for us? Well, maybe we're going to have some bounce backs. We can talk a little bit more about that, where things bounce off the red signal line. Remember, we're still in a confirmed down move on the S&P 500. It was just about to change as the market was reaching those highs, and it just doesn't have enough energy to do it. Now, that could change. Over the course of this next week, the market could just get revved up and start shooting higher and higher and higher, but it pulled back and away from a crossover. And I was trying my best to figure out how I could possibly do a successful practice trade on an up move. I just couldn't. I was just like, is, is, the, is, our, is the magic of the weekly vertical crossover going to fail us? Well, it didn't. It didn't. I'm very happy as to the accuracy of these charts. And again, we experimented a long time coming up with the 1024 for the price percent oscillator using the exponential moving average of eight. I mean, again, we used lessons learned from complexity theory to set up what we do here. And again, not going to jump into a whole bunch of complicated stuff, but our focus is to realize we live in a dynamic world, a dynamic marketplace. We have to be ready, willing, and able to do what works, no matter what that is. That is, again, why I say you have to be able to deal with the unexpected, and you have to be able to use the charts and the data to help you see what's really happening, not to be fooled by the noise. And that's what gets so many people. They get fooled by the noise. It overwhelms them. The cacophony of sounds of people telling you what's happening, but it's not really happening. Like the din of battle for those of you who've been in combat before. You know what it's like when the shells are going off and everybody's running around and nobody knows what to do. Being able to focus and see what's really happening. We talk about separating the signal from the noise. And that's what we've got to do. That's what we try to do here every single day is focus on price movement. That is the truth. That is the defining thing in what we do, following price movement, looking for waves of price movement and riding the waves when they establish themselves. Primarily, they establish themselves with a weekly vertical crossover. I get so excited when I talk about this stuff because it is exciting. It's exciting to be able to watch see things happen, and then accurately follow it. And again, practice, practice, practice. As I say over and over again, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. It's what you got to do. 
And that's what we do here every single day. So let's jump into what's happening. Derivative oscillator continuing to lose upward momentum. Red open box candle with a wick on top. Did it reach a higher high? One, uh, let's see, 302.63. 302, yes, I believe we, we identified that yesterday. We reached a 20 cents higher. Now, again, we're talking about, you know, a, a almost $300 per share ETF. So that's a very minute percentage, but it did get a little bit higher. But again, the energy backed off at the end, and we may have a bounce off. That we can treat just like a weekly vertical crossover going back down again. If we do see it starting to bounce off, how are we going to see that happen first? Well, of course, my friends, we're going to see a two-day crossover going down. We're going to sure look at that if that does occur. So what do we see happening? We see where things topped off. Actually, the, last, the highest high we've had lately was back on Thursday the 12th at uh, 302.46. Now, again, this is measured differently. It's a different chart, different numbers and all. Let's just check out. Yeah, that is correct. So that's about the same. Uh, sometimes you can get anomalies with the numbers, but it is registering the same. 302.46 and then our high of 302.63. So again, that's where we hit the prior high. And what did things do? They flattened out and we ended the week, I want to make sure I'm, yes, I was correct. Uh, we ended the week on the two-day candle with a doji. A red doji means indecision tending down. We had a red open box spinning top, means some indecision. This means lots of indecision when you have a doji. Looks like a cross. Uh, again, I've got downloaded for all of you who subscribe at chartingwealth.com for free. And we send you out, of course, the video that we record every day, whether it's a daily market review or the comprehensive review and forecast that I'm doing right now that we do on Fridays. Send out every day. Go there. Register for free. Uh, and we will. you'll see in your notes there will be a link to our Heiken Ashi Candlestick Training. I think we've had 126,000 people take that. Um, and appreciate all of the upvotes overwhelmingly. We worked hard to put that out quite a while back. It is a really good training to help you understand Heiken Ashi, average pace in Japanese, I'm told, average pace candlesticks. They're so much easier to follow and understand than getting into all the traditional candlestick lure. Those of you who love that, love it, do it, fine. Whatever works for you, just practice to show yourself approved. Make sure you know what you are doing. Practice, practice, practice. Okay, enough said of that. What do we see going on the price percent oscillator? Gone flat, not heading up anymore. In fact, it's a little bit down. Red signal line heading up toward it. Derivative oscillator losing momentum. What are we going to wait for over the course of this next week? A crossover going down. That will show us a bounce off the red signal line of the price percent oscillator on the weekly. And again, we will look to pull the trigger on a practice trade the minute that we know that's happening. I'm going to do it at 3.55 on the afternoon of the closing of that candle, crossing over, going down, and practice that again. It has been working lately. We want to continue to practice and see that it continues to work. And I want to get in earlier, as, as early as we can on that. So it may not happen. May, things may turn around over the course of this next week and start moving up. If they do, then we'll let them do that. Now, let's look at the four-hour chart. We saw some dipping down in the morning, just pushing right through that two-day trend line and then dropping off the deep end with a big old wick on the bottom, acceleration of the derivative oscillator, price percent oscillator also bending over, going down, lots of loss of momentum there. Very interesting to see. So that's where we are. We're going to look potentially for a bounce off of the red signal line, see if we can't find a jumping in point on a two-day crossover going down. We can also wait and do the standard traditional thing that we have taught for years, and that is for a pullback on the four-hour chart after a two-day crossover going down, and then when it rotates back in the same direction as the weekly and the two-day jump in there. But we're just experimenting. Remember, Complexity theory has us do that. We don't get held to anything except what works. 
dynamic marketplace, dynamic decision making, and that's what we're trying to do. I continue to study uh, chaos theory a little bit, but complexity theory more and more, and it is fascinating to me in the world we live in. Let's go from the S&P 500 to QQQ. What do we see going on there? Same kind of thing, my friends. It didn't get as close crossover. Well, in fact, we had a crossover as the week was progressing on the S&P 500, but it pulled back through at the end. The Qs hadn't gotten there yet, and so it has not happened. We have a red open box, again, not reaching a higher high than the prior week. So we see that happening now. Let's. So we're still in a confirmed down move. We've talked about throughout the course of the week before we could confirm a crossover that, of course, we always pay attention to the candle that's in play. We don't call a candle till it closes. That keeps you from screwing up and thinking this candle was going to cross over going up, which it didn't. Let's look at the two-day chart. What are we waiting for here? Again, we saw where things topped out back on Thursday, representing Wednesday and Thursday, the 12th, 11th and 12th. And what do we have? We have a sideways slide underweight. We have a green doji that formed. And again, that means indecision tending up. The prior one was a red doji. Doji's indecision. We see that the derivative oscillator is uh, losing momentum for the first time in quite a while. And the price percent oscillator is edging down as the red signal line comes up toward it. So again, looking for a two-day crossover going down to jump into a downtrade. Be ready to practice that. Use your daily market worksheet, weekly market worksheet, and your trade worksheets, my friends. They're for free. They're in the show notes. We have PDFs. Copy those out and use them. What do we see as far as the morning goes? We see a red spinning top, and then we see just a strong down candle as the market sank in the afternoon. Price percent oscillator heading down, derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. So let's see how this next week develops and be ready to jump on that two-day chart if we have a crossover on it. So again, be ready. Now, let's see what we have going on on 20-year bonds. We have another down week. Looked like we were going to have a crossover. It pulled back through. It did not happen. It was actually quite strong at one point. Bonds up for the day, 1.32%. And we see where things have really just sort of flattened out over the last two weeks. In fact, this last week didn't hit lower lows than the prior week. The opposite, of course, with the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500. Derivative oscillator has gone negative, but we don't have a crossover going down. Go to the two-day chart. We can see that the latest two-day candle is a green open box candle. That's strong up movement. We'll be waiting, watching, seeing if we're going to have a crossover going up. Derivative oscillator is still way negative, and of course, the price percent oscillator is still way negative, but we'll see. It'll take some power to rotate the two-day back over, but it may happen. What's up with the four-hour chart? Did you notice we talked about this earlier? All week long, the four-hour chart continued to move up, up, up every single day. It moved up. Never a solid red down candle the whole week. And of course, finally, on the afternoon on thir uh, Mon Thursday morning, sorry, things pushed through the two-day trend line and headed up. So again, that's what caused us not to have the crossover going down. So we'll keep our eye on bonds over the course of the next week, see if we can hop into an up trade, an up trade. We want to be potentially looking for the ability to practice that. Let's go to gold. What do we see there? Gold down 1.18%. How did we finish the week? We finished the week with a green, and again, this is somewhat of a cautionary down candle. It's not an open box green candle like we saw with bonds, and it has a very little candle body, so it does show us a fair bit of indecision and a lot of wick on the bottom, but we didn't have a crossover on gold either. We did have the derivative oscillator go negative, so it'll be curious to see what happens over the course of this next week? Again, gold still in a confirmed up move, just like bonds, even though it got awfully close. And then what do we see on the two-day chart? We see how that has pushed through the two-day candle. 
And we have a green up candle for the latest two-day candle. First one that we have seen in a while. Price percent oscillators lost some of that downward momentum. Derivative oscillator has also. We go from the two-day to the four-hour. And of course, that four-hour chart crossed over going up back on the 17th. And then we had that bizarre afternoon candle on Wednesday, followed by some down movement. But on Friday, on the whole, up in the morning and way up in the afternoon, we can see how, how high we reached about the width of the candle body on the wick on top. So again, that uh, w again shows us that we had some real momentum there at the end of the day, derivative oscillator heading up, price percent oscillator spiking up. So that's where we are. What are we going to be looking for for gold? About the same thing as with bonds. We're going to keep our eye actually for all of our charts. For gold and bonds, we're going to be looking for a crossover going up on the two-day candle. That's gold and bonds. And for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100, a crossover going down. Why? Because, of course, we want to have the two-day chart moving in the same direction as the weekly. Now, it could be the opposite. The market could fly up in stocks, and then we could end next week with a weekly vertical crossover going up. That could happen. Let's see how it shakes out. Remember, we let the price movement lead us in what to do in our practice trades. Folks, that's where we are as we end the week. You hadn't purchased our book. We have an autographed copy waiting for you. We appreciate your support. And again, if you happen to live overseas, then just email us, cw at chartingwealth.com. We'll send you a PayPal invoice. Otherwise, for the folks in the States, follow the link in the show notes. And we so appreciate you being with us. As far as our Patreon members go, thank you again so much for all you do to help us. And we're going to be putting out a good Patreon uh, training over the course of this next week. I've had some thoughts for you guys. I'm going to get a special training out for you probably about Tuesday. So again, be watching your emails for that. That's where we are, folks. Hope that you have a fabulous weekend. Or if you're getting this, maybe even you're listening Monday morning before the market's open. Hope you had a great weekend. God bless, my friends. All the best from the whole team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.